hello, welcome back to St Michael's Hill. Um, first of all, a quick thank you to everyone who's uh, been watching videos lately. Um, it's been, the response just keeps growing. Um, I think the last couple of weekends have been my biggest ever in terms of people watching the videos. So thank you very much for the, the support. It really does mean an awful lot. Um, this week's video, I'm going to be doing something which I mentioned in the March update. Um, which is going to be fitting this uh, Great Western uh, Lima Class 47 with one of the um, CD motor kits from Strathpeffer Junction. So um, this is not something I've done before. Uh, this is something which David at Strathpeffer has um, been working on for a while, I believe. Um, he put up a video uh, uh, probably about a year ago now of him um, doing something similar to uh, some of his own kind of older locos, putting CD motors in them. And at the time, I kind of thought it was an amazing idea, and he did mention about maybe looking into kind of doing some sort of kit um, to allow that to happen. So he's gone away and tested it thoroughly, um, and now they've just been made available. So I'll leave the link below um, where you can pick those up. And uh, today, basically, is going to be a quick kind of um, go at me trying to fit one to this uh, class 47. I've got no idea how easy these are to do. Hopefully fairly easy. They look kind of fairly easy. Um, but yeah, I'll give it a go and uh, and let you know what I think. I think the first thing to do is kind of talk about why I'm going to be doing this. Um, there is an argument to say that uh, these days it's better just to kind of buy new locos the things that hornby and backman and uh, newer manufacturers like hattons and acura scale are now putting out is far far better than uh, these old lima locos however um there's a few th reasons why i'm doing this basically i think firstly i have a load of them so there's no it seems crazy to me to kind of throw away locos that can be made uh, to run well um, and with a bit of detailing look good um, just because they're kind of not really up to standard and maybe the motors aren't great so what David has done is for £13.50 potentially kind of renewed a loco with a kind of you know decent motor um, and then in terms of detailing it, you know lots can be done so um, this great western uh, version is exactly how they come um, apart from there is a coupling hook missing on the front here but generally this is this is the condition they came in brand new so look it's not perfect but there is a level of kind of you know detailing um it's obviously not kind of etch grills or anything like that but it's it's passable you know it's it's a decent representation the class 47 is a loco that until back when kind of got their hands on there was a few so there was the helgen version which is generally a good model but is kind of a bit oversized and a bit chunky um, the Hornby one, which in my opinion just doesn't capture the th the 47 at all. And then there was this. Um, so the Lima one, I think, really does kind of capture that. Um, the, uh, let me move this one out of the way a second, but the uh, Swallow version behind is one that I've kind of, I've done a bit of a repaint on. The, uh, the white at the bottom here was um, a mainline uh, colour, which for the Insta-City Swallow was incorrect. But I've kind of taken that, I've uh, re-sprayed the white, I've renumbered it, um, put a name plate on it, and detailed up the front end, um, and given it a bit of a weather. I think generally it looks pretty good. Um, you know, it doesn't stand up to the back one one, and there's actually a bit more work I could do. I might look to kind of uh, do the handrails, pick up the handrails a little better, maybe with real wire, and uh, again with the... Uh, windscreen wipers get those done but generally I'm kind of quite happy with how it looks um, with a bit of kind of subtle weathering um, which isn't necessarily come up so well on camera although if I put the there you go you can kind of tell tell on the bogies there the difference in colour uh, between the two so I, I kind of feel that there is kind of mileage in getting uh, these old locos um, to, to up and running and getting them to work properly so Hopefully, David's kit is going to be able to kind of bring a new lease of life, um, not only to these two models, but to all of my kind of old Lima models. So I have a few. So there's a few HSTs that I've got. Um, there's these two uh, Class 47s. I believe I also have a, a Class 60 and a couple of Class 37s as well. So 
if uh, if this works and it's easy to go in, I'll uh, I'll certainly be placing another order, and uh, it should hopefully keep these models running on the uh, on the layout. So let's hope that it works how it should. So once you open up the box, this is uh, what you get. So there's the uh, Ringfield um, motor, uh, sorry, the Ringfield replacement motor, um, and a casing. So it's been three D printed casing to. Uh, to go on to where the motor currently is housed. There's a small uh, section of heat shrink tubing, and then there's uh, some basic kind of safety instructions um, talking about how this was made, the temperature parameters that it works at, and all that sort of stuff. And then a few little uh, extras, so there's a sticker and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, very nice little package. Um, and it directs you to um, an online um, instruction portal so I think the best thing to do is me to bring that up and, and basically follow it along and uh, see how easy it is to uh, install. It should be said as well that uh, I'm pretty sure that the uh, the locomotive I am um, going to replace the motor of is um, DCC fitted so I'm pretty sure there's a chip inside of it um, so I'm going to assume that is the case. Um, I think the Intercity one that I've shown you isn't uh, DCC fitted, so if I was going to do that one, I would also um, fit a DCC decoder in as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. So the first thing the instructions uh, say to do is to remove the body. Um, with these Lima Class 47s, it's just a case of um, firstly removing the buffers and, uh, and then it's just unclipping uh, the body shell so there's a clip here and here on each side um, so you just need to remove the buffers from each end and then uh, just unclip the, the body from the chassis. I'm going to uh, place the body to one side and then uh, the instructions quite wisely say to take a photo of the chassis just so you know what's what. Um, it does say that these kits are kind of fully reversible so if you keep all the parts uh, that come out of here if for whatever reason um, it, you don't like uh, the performance or, or whatever, um, or you just want to change back, um, then you can easily just reverse the process as long as you've kept the bits. So uh, that's, that's always good to know. Um, right, so I'm just going to remove the body off camera and we'll uh, see you in a second. So there we have it. Um, as you can see, I've already DCC uh, fitted this locomotive. Um, it looks like there are uh, pickups at both ends of the uh, of the train, so um, it's just something to make a note of that uh, the wires can connect. Um, yes, there's pickups going from both ends. So as you can see here, they kind of join together. Um, so just turning around to have a look, the um, basic premise of what we're doing today is removing this. Uh, casing with the motor inside and they're going to be replacing it with the 3d printed one and then uh, rewiring up the body so it's a fairly simple job there are some few intricacies looking at the instructions that uh, we'll need to run through but uh, it's nothing too challenging hopefully um, so i'm going to take a photo of this now and just so i'm uh, aware of what goes where um, it's always good to kind of do this have references um, as you go so that's done. The next thing to do is going to be um, just remove the uh, the wiring at, uh, at, the, at the motor end with um, using a soldering iron, and uh, and from then we'll be able to remove the bogey and uh, start to fit the uh, the new motor. So firstly, I'm just going to uh, unsolder the wires that uh, go from the um, chip to the motor. Just a simple case of a little touch with a soldering iron. And there we go, that's free. And then the only other thing I'm gonna to need to, um, to unattach is uh, the one that's leading to the motor bogey. So this wire here is gonna be fine because we're not really gonna to get too involved with it. Um, it's just going to be the one that leads under here um, that just needs to be desoldered and removed. So. so there we have it. The uh, motor bogey is completely free now of all the wires. 
The next thing the instructions say to do are to take out these um, little screws, which is going to release the um, the mode of the armature. Sorry, um, that all needs to be removed. The screws need to be kept, but the the rest of it can be set aside. Um, obviously, keep it keep the armature and everything in case you need it later. Also, it's always good to have spares in case any of your models aren't kind of uh, you know using these new CD motors. So, I would say keep it. Altogether, but there's no need for it anymore um, for this conversion. Um, the other thing that the instructions suggest that I will be doing is just giving the whole kind of uh, casing inside here a good old clean. Um, and it's, you know, as suggested in the instructions, a good time to just kind of give everything a bit of a clean down. You'll be amazed at even on uh, locos that have been fairly well kind of maintained how much kind of grime and grease comes off of the uh, off of the plastic when you give them a good clean so you can use kind of uh, isopropyl alcohol or um, something like that something that's going to be uh, easy to kind of uh, clean your model with So there we go, everything's been removed. I had to remove the um, the central um, axle to get the, the magnet out. That's not a problem, that just goes back in. Um, so yeah, no no worries there. Uh, it's completely kind of unpowered and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. So easy enough to do. So the next job is just to give it a quick clean. Um, I'm probably gonna use some, uh, some sort of solution and some cotton buds uh, just to kind of get it all uh, nice and clean inside. Um, so yeah. We'll do that and then it's about uh, fitting the new motor up inside. So I'm just going to use a little bit of nail polish remover. Um, it's usually pretty safe and does a good job. So kind of never let me down in the past. So I just apply a little bit of that to a, a cotton bud and just kind of give, her, give all of the model a good kind of clean in here. Get off any uh, nasty substances. Generally, things are actually looking pretty clean. There's nothing coming off here at all, uh, which is good. This is actually a model that I've serviced fairly recently, so I wouldn't expect there to be too much uh, too much grime on it. But still, just give it a good old clean. So now that's clean, we can actually get the motor out. Um, the first thing we need to do is just... Uh, look at the housing make sure there's no kind of uh, spurs or anything that have kind of been done as part of the printing process generally it, it looks pretty pretty tidy there are one or two little bits i'm just going to take a craft knife and just quickly uh, take those off uh, but generally it's looking very nice so the next job is i've got to um trim the replacement gear so the gear that's uh, supplied is a little bit too long we need to reduce it to four mil so the instructions uh, basically say to place the replacement gear onto the new um, armature and then um, just slightly and then use a craft knife on the edge of a table to cut to um, four mil so i'm going to do that now and uh, i'll be right back it's probably a job that's not easily done on camera although i will try and uh, try and film it So there we go, I've trimmed that down to about four millimetres. Um, it's a little bit of a tricky job, but uh, just take your time. Don't put too much force on it, and uh, yeah, it should come out okay. The next step is to apply a single drop of uh, lubricant in here. So... So there we go, there's a, a single drop in there. I'm just now going to rotate the um, arm with my finger just to kind of get that uh, lubricant all running nicely. So the next job is to actually install the motor into the new uh, housing. Um, it says, you see there's 
some holes um, at the bottom of here. You have to place the two wires that come off the motor through the middle hole and, uh, and then push it down into place. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, we want the kind of cog facing outwards. Um, it does say it could be quite tight and to use a bit of a seesaw motion uh, if it doesn't uh, go in easily. So we'll give it a go and see. There we go. It's actually gone in very, very easily. Very, very easily indeed. Next thing uh, the instructions say to do is to grab the uh, cog between your finger and thumb and uh, spin the... Uh, motor casing and everything should kind of stay in place which it does so um very nice fit there so that's now done i need to uh place the housing back onto the original uh casing so the wires are going to feed through this hole in the top and then uh, we're going to get uh, the gear in line with these and then in theory should just screw on um in these holes here so let's uh give it a go kind of the moment of truth. <laughs> Seems to have gone on uh, perfectly. Again, um, no kind of issues at all. The wires are free. Um, I'm just going to screw the uh, screws back in place. And uh, in theory, we're... Good to go. The, uh, the gear is free moving, as you can see, which is, again, another good good sign that everything is kind of looking right. Now that I've screwed it back on, I'm just going to double check that uh, these gears still turn and everything. Hmm. So something during that process has actually uh, seized these gears up. So I'm gonna just undo it slightly. Maybe it's just a bit too tight. Yeah. Spins again now. So I think what it was, I just screwed it slightly too tight. Um, even just another half turn here is gonna help probably. There we go. So that's kind of back to probably what it should be. So just uh, just a note, kind of don't screw too tightly. Um, it does actually say, it does actually say in the instructions not to kind of screw these overly tight. Um, so just kind of go careful with them, I think, is, is the kind of easy motto. <laughs> so here we go, the motor's back in the... Uh, the chassis now uh, just a case of wiring it back up so the bl black pickup wire just needs to go back where it was before the uh, gray uh, wire from the decoder needs to go to the blue wire uh, from the motor and the orange wire just goes to the orange wire uh, so the orange wire from the decoder goes to the orange wire from the motor and that should be everything kind of up and running again and then it'll just be a case of testing it so um that's what I'm going to do now. And uh, yeah, it's a fairly simple job. So I will uh, just uh, give you a quick look at what we're doing and then uh, it'll be to the testing stages. So when it comes to soldering, uh, I like to use the kind of uh, extra grip um, just to hold everything in place. I've placed the heat shrink cabling on the wires already. So once the join's made, I will uh, cover it over with heat shrink just to keep everything kind of uh, nice and, and a neat but also it stops short circuits uh, is what I've done already on uh, the DCC wires just to make sure everything's kind of neat and, and tidy. Um, so I'm just going to do these two wires and then I'll just do the same with the uh, blue and the grey wire. So there we go. The uh, the model's all been wired back up and uh, it's ready for a test. I'm going to 
One thing I do need to do quickly is put the bogey supports back on, uh, just to hold everything in place at this end. Um, but after that, we're uh, we're ready to test it out. Um, assuming this works, um, then I will uh, get it all back together and uh, running on the layout. So welcome to the test track. Um, the test track today is literally a Pico uh, yard of flexi track straight into my NCE power cab on the dining room table. Um, until I get the layout back up and running, this is probably the easiest thing to do. Um, there's been a couple of changes actually since uh, the last kind of scene in the video. It's been a couple of days actually. Firstly, I managed to uh, blow the chip that was uh, in the in the loco, so I've had to change that one. It's nothing to do with the motor kit at all. Um, it was basically just me uh, messing around and I accidentally shorted it out and it just went, um, it can happen to anyone. Um, it's nothing to do with David's kit. Um, the second thing is, uh, when I went to test the loco, just before I blew the chip, I was having a few problems. So um, I put it onto the um, track and I would basically have what I thought was a short circuit, and I thought it was a short circuit because the um, middle wheel of the axle was touching the motor um, around the other side, and, and I thought for some reason that that would be a short circuit. So I got in touch with David and basically said, look, I think this is what's happening. Um, have you had any issues with it? And he basically said, look, um, it shouldn't be that, and actually sent me a video straight away, just kind of uh, trying to replicate the fault, and it was fine, and um, it look like it was something else so I had a quick look and I think what was happening was that the gears weren't turning and it was just causing kind of um, a problem with my controller and it was just not working and that's probably something to do with um, what was going on so I asked him what he thought it might be and he suggested that maybe the um, axle in here wasn't aligned quite right so if it's a little bit out it uh, might not kind of work and, and he was right so I've kind of had a little play with it and basically what I've had to do is loosen off the screws um, a little bit on the back just to make sure everything was kind of free running. Um, in the video before we kind of showed you that I had an issue where um, when I went to test it it just wouldn't move at all and I think that's what had happened so I tightened things up a little bit and uh, it just it kind of seized up. Um, now that it's kind of uh, not doing that anymore I've managed to kind of run it um, along kind of uh, just push it along um, uh, the cutting mat and it turns everything so I'm going to give it a quick test and see if we've uh, made any progress I'm going to just run it as slow as I can so just kind of one notch on the on the speed and we'll see if it works so yeah as you can see straight off the bat it's it's running very very nicely at a very slow speed so it is smooth as anything and as you can hear it's pretty much silent um, and this is incredible where it was before it was uh, a typical noisy Lima Loco um, so this is an incredible <laughs> uh, change so um, I will probably stop this before it goes off the abyss um, and to be eaten by the panther on the floor um, so if I change the other direction and give it a bit of uh, speed it's there we go it's moving a bit quicker it's a bit noisier but I think that's because of the uh, basically the Lima gearing system is just a bit noisy when I run it to, um, without the motor on at all just push it along the gears do make a bit of racket so I guess that is just plastic on plastic so there we go what I will do now is just kind of tidy up these wires get a bit of um, electrical tape and just tie them all into place see I've just got a little bit of masking tape here just to keep them um, out of the way of the gears uh, when I was testing it before unfortunately one of the wires from the Dakota also got stuck in a gear so it was pretty much a nightmare day and um, when I contacted David I was yeah not having the best of time but he was amazing um, and sent over videos straight away trying to like help me and he did straight away which is an incredible customer service really um, from a kind of product buying point of view um, so I think Basically, if I was to kind of give a, uh, this kit kind of a bit of a review or, or whatever, um, the process of putting it together um, on paper literally looks quite difficult. The instructions look a little bit daunting at first, but that's only because 
David uh, puts a lot of detail into everything he does and makes it very clear. Actually, when you pick up the model, start working through them, it's very simple. The, the instructions are very, very well written. The kit itself goes together very well indeed. Um, and once I've got this issue sorted out with the with the gear placing, um, we're kind of, it's been an absolute dream. And I know already David has uh, updated the instruction uh, page on his website with um, some tips about that. So, you know, instantly the, the kind of feedback that I've given him has, has gone straight onto the website to kind of help others. So that won't be an issue for anyone else. Um, and for 13, or sorry, for £12.50 or £13.50, whatever the price was, whether it's people who uh, can't afford Backman Loco or a brand new Hornby Loco, or just someone like me who, you know, has a few of the kind of modern up-to-date Locos, but has a, a fleet of old Lima and old Hornby Ringfield driven stuff that would love to be able to run with it. But unfortunately, it's just, you know, it doesn't perform reliably. He's kind of allowed for a very small price, those locos to kind of be born again. So it's a massive thumbs up really to David and everything he's doing. So, you know, I'm not being paid in any way. This isn't a sponsored thing. He's not asked me to do it. Um, but I'm just kind of recommending him as, uh, I'm recommending these kits, sorry, as just something that uh, I think is a really, really good uh, idea. And it's been executed very, very well indeed. It's um, made something that before probably would have been quite a daunting task when it came to, um, working on getting the motor in the housing and all that sort of thing and if you want to see how difficult it was watch his uh, previous video on how he did it it uh, looked a lot more involved for sure um, now it literally is almost as close to plug and play as uh, you could want and I'm sure if you wanted to just do it on a DC system and not include the decoder it's even easier you literally just plug it in screw it up and uh, solder two wires in and you're away so you couldn't ask for something easier so yeah i think overall massively impressed with this and it's uh, really brought life back into this old loco that i want to um kind of run so awesome i'm gonna put this back together now and i'll, I'll show you one last shot with the body back on but uh, until next week thanks very much and i'll see you again soon in some michael's hill bye Thanks for joining me on St Michael's Hill. If you've liked what you've seen, check out my Lima Class 33 project. And why not check out David's channel, Strathpepper Junction. If you've got old Lima Locos, why not pick up his kit? You won't regret it.